Hello and welcome everyone. I am Linda Israel and thank you so very much for being here at my live stream on YouTube. I go live every Monday at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time unless I'm on vacation or something else comes up but generally I'm live or I have a premiere video that you can come and watch. If you're watching this as a replay after the live stream has ended and you're on a computer, you can look for the little gear at the bottom of the screen and change the speed. If you're on a mobile device, generally the little three little dots at the top, you can use those to change the playback speed to get through a little faster because generally my live streams last around two to two and a half hours. I want to thank Robin for being my moderator and administrator and note taker throughout the live stream. She is generally my one uh, right hand woman, if you will, and I am so thankful to have her. She also is an administrator of the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group. Occasionally, if she's not available, one of the other administrators will come over and help me or a friend will help me moderate the video today. If you have questions, please feel free to put those in all caps and I'll do my best to answer those questions. If I don't see it, please ask again. Or if you know the answer to somebody's question, please answer it. Hey, if you have a YouTube channel, please feel free to share with us by saying, hey, I have a YouTube channel and this is what I do on it. You won't be able to share a link, but you can at least talk about your YouTube channel. Let's keep the chat upbeat, friendly, and helpful. If you are having a great day, let us know. But honestly, we don't want the negative what is going on in the world right now because we are here to escape that, to be inspired, to be friendly, and have some fun. During the live stream, you have an opportunity to earn junk bucks. You can type exclamation point bucks to see how many that you have once Junkie Joe is up because this is preliminary and I've pre-recorded this. Once you have 2,000 junk bucks, you can redeem those by typing a ward and you can get a $10 off coupon to my shop. How do you earn junk bucks? Just by being here chatting with us so make sure that you speak up in the chat so that Junkie Joe registers that you're here and by playing the in chat games and then also whenever you make donations occasionally I have raffles in fact right now there should be Junkie Joe coming up you can type exclamation point raffle just as that says and you can enter the raffle to win 200 junk bucks. If you make a donation during my live stream, do go over to my website at lindaisrael.com. You can see the name scrolling across the bottom here. And create a user account. Once you've created a user account on my website, make sure that you use the contact me form and say, hey, my name is on YouTube and I donated. And then I can get you added to the YouTube donator membership on my website. What does that do? Well, a member of my website in the YouTube donator membership gets 5% off orders in my shop, gets several digital downloads for free, and during the live stream, when you donate, you get a chance to win the journal that I raffle off at the very end. Throughout the live stream, I will have different raffles given away prizes. If you will type exclamation point raffle when you see those come up, then you can have a chance to win those items. We're going to get started here in just a moment. Thank you so much for being here today. When the video is over, come back and leave a comment. Tell me what you liked about today's video or if you have questions 
and you're watching this as a replay, use that comment section down below. Also, look in the description box to links to the Friendly Junk Journal paper, People Facebook group, as well as By Linda Israel, my Instagram, Twitter, my website, and generally I try to update the products that I use, and those links are in the description box as well. All right, well, let's get started. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So glad to have you here today. How is everybody? I hope you are well. And those of you that celebrated Thanksgiving, I hope you had a nice Thanksgiving. Mine was good. We had Henry's parents and aunt over for late lunch, early dinner. <clears throat> So it was nice to hang out and chat with them. I just realized my mouth is really dry, so I'm going to put some lip gloss on. See if it'll help my lips. I hope you got to do something fun or interesting or productive during your last weekend. Yes, one more day on my Black Friday sale. If you want to get anything... 10% uh, off your orders. If you currently have a subscription or a membership on my website, those discounts will stack. So if you are a YouTube donator and you've donated to my live stream, you've been added to the YouTube donator membership, you get 5% off. And then if you use the Black Friday coupon, you'll get an additional 10% off. I rarely do that because I feel my prices are very fair and I can't give my things away. So <laughs> I hope you will take advantage of this coupon. I was watching a couple of videos. I don't remember what day it was. Maybe it was Saturday. I don't know. Whatever day it was, it rained, which I think was Saturday. And I was watching Camilla Crafts Designs. And she was showing a one-sheet folio. So basically, she took one page of 12 by 12 paper and cut it down and then made a little folio out of it. And I made one as an example. My thought was some people don't have 12 by 12 decorative paper and very few on uh, that may have the 12 by 12 may have double sided cardstock. That's what this is. So I thought, why not make this from scratch. Maybe no scrapbook paper used, but using some book pages. So let's start by decorating some papers that we're going to use on our book, on our folio. So I thought I'd make a mixed media. I know several of you have torn apart books or gutted them because you wanted the cover or for other reasons. And so you may have a few book pages. These are a Spanish book. I think it's Don Quixote in Spanish. And so I've got some white acrylic craft paint. I find that the acrylic craft paint works best for this. You can use a gesso if you like gesso to give the paper a little bit of texture. I don't like the feel of gesso. I don't like how gritty it is. So I don't um, use it very often. So I thought what I would do today is just use the acrylic paint and I'm going to use a real simple tool. This is a room key. You could use an old a gift card or a credit card if you have it. You may want to cover up your numbers if you're doing videos. And all I'm going to do is use this card to spread out the paint. You could also use, if you have it, a brayer. You could use a paintbrush. It just kind of depends upon the look and what tools that you have. So I'm just going to spread out. I'm going to do two of them so I can set them aside to dry. I've already done a few. Well, I always I cleared that out once already. Paint boogers are not my friend. Okay, that's probably way more paint than I need. Uh, so I've already done a few ahead of time just so we didn't have to wait 
for the paint to dry on any additional pages that we decorate today. You don't need a whole lot for this. You could also just use um, magazine images, wallpaper. You're not limited to scrapbook paper or book pages. You know, think outside the box. Maybe you've got some wrapping paper. You've got some tissue. Maybe you've got some napkins and you could adhere those to other papers to make them sturdy. All right, so there is some pages that have been painted. I'm going to grab a tray and set these in it for right now to dry. Okay, set those over there. Move the paint out of the way. And I've got a rag here, so I'm just going to kind of wipe at my mat just a little bit. I bought some Teflon baking sheets off of Amazon and they were not the coated kind so the paint seeps through but it helps to keep from making a huge mess on my desk. All right so we've got some pages that we've painted so here's a couple of pages I'll get one out. I'll show you a couple examples of things that I did um, if you like stencils and rubber stamping, that was done with this one. This one was rubber stamping and coloring it in. And then here was another that was stamping stencils and coloring it in. So let's do a couple of designs. So I've got a book page out here. You kind of need to decide if it matters in what direction you do it. I don't really care. So what I try to do is turn my images if they're considered a directional image and just move them around on my page. My keeps flashing out. Stop that. Just stop it already. Um, so it kind of just depends upon what you want to do. Some things that I have used, I use a Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist, I use Distress Oxides, I've used acrylic paint of course, and I've also used watercolor paint. So let's start with this one. I think what I want to do is I'm going to get out one of my stencils here. This is, I don't, can't remember, I always do this. I think this is more Little Daisies, a stencil. And I'm going to grab some Distress Oxide inks. I'm trying to decide what color. You know, I haven't really done kind of a amber or gold. That one's dried marigold. I think that one's kind of a peachy orange. My idea was, where'd I put it, to kind of go with these colors that I have here. So let's see, maybe that one. I'm digging around. This is my, my colors. I got them all separated out. I'm trying to decide what other color. Oh, maybe fossilized amber. So we kind of get a little bit of that yellow in the orange. And maybe some crackling, uh, crackling campfire. I think that'll be good. These are some Hewlett Packard instant ink boxes that the ink comes in and I just found that it helps keep things a little bit more contained and organized. This is a tower drawer that I have beside me that I've had for years. I've probably had this, well we've been in this house since 99. How many years is that? Uh, 20 some odd years, <laughs> 20, almost 25 years, I guess. Um, and I know I bought these either right when we moved in or right before I moved in and I moved them from my other location. And I wish that I had a couple more of that style that has the narrow door drawers, because what I find happens to me is if it's a deep drawer, I'll show you a dither. This is from the same unit. So this is a deep drawer and I put boxes and labeled what's in them so that when I needed something, I could pull it out 
get what I need, put it back in, and slap it down in. Otherwise, it was just chaos. You can kind of see I've got, this is even in the front, it's kind of chaos. <laughs> How do y'all like to sort your things? I've been trying to spend a little bit more time. That's the wrong color. Okay, who we got here? Marigold. And what is this one? Horse moss. I know I have crackling campfire here somewhere. Campfire. And I may not have the marigold yet. I may need to get, there's amber, fossilized amber. Okay, good. I did have all those. Okay. Hey, Rhonda, welcome. So glad you're here. Hello, hello, hello. Um, what else was I going to show you? I think that's all. I was, trying, I was trying to think if I had something else I was going to grab, but I'm not going to worry about it. All right, so we're going to start with what I consider the lightest color first. So this will be marigold, this will be amber, and this will be campfire. So I'm going to do dried marigold and just kind of add a little bit of color around. I'm going to move this over here so I can get to it better. And if you really want intense color, then really saturate the area and add a little bit of color. Okay, then I'm going to set that aside. So that was dried marigold. So now I'm going to use fossilized amber, which is this one. Kind of like skipping around and applying the colors here or there. I want some a little bit more intense than others. Okay, and then got those two, so I'll put these away and let's get crackling campfire out. You color group your brushes, gotcha, gotcha. I I don't have that many brushes and I because I, I don't really use them that often on all of the colors. Um, but I understand color grouping, you know, having one that's basically for a red group, one for a blue group. I do have one that says blue and I think I have one that says green. I don't remember if I have one that says yellow. Yeah. How's that? It's just adding a little bit of color. I'm going to set this aside, put these away so I can find them another day. All right, so I added some flowers all over. Now, if you um, want it to have a muted, more blurred look, you could spray this with Tattered Angels. In fact, I may go ahead. I have a, I got hair in my mouth. Come on. Got it. I have a brown. Yes, here it is. That's called... Uh, Cantana, Cantata. Hey, Leah, welcome. So glad you're here. Thank you, Julie. All right, so I'm just going to spritz this. Hey, Janice, a couple of times. Distress oxide does react with liquids, so if you get it wet, it will react. I think these are probably dry enough. I am going to set this in a tray. I took up my glass mat so I could do the mixed media thing. I still need to figure out how to basically dull the glare on my glass mat when I do videos. I have two huge LED lights above me and there's LED uh, bars of light whenever I have my glass and you can also see the light fixture uh, in the center of the room. Okay. 
Okay. So now we have that. I think now I'm going to grab some stamps. I um, paint all of my stamp information on a piece of cardstock and I include the name and of course an image and then I basically scan that into my computer if I'm doing it from scratch since I am the owner of these images I have them digital so I just make a screen full of the images the way that I want them and then I mirror those so that when you remove the stamps off of the sheet you know where they go so if you're missing one you're like hey where did that one go I think I'm going to use let's use this one this is a new stamp I just added it it's called music cluster I added it I think Wednesday or Friday I don't remember I've just added it to my shop I'm trying to get it right side up as best as possible and I think I want to use the Ulysses butterfly so I'm going to get that out all right so I need some ink I'm going to use my archival ink jet black so we've used acrylic paint, Distress Oxide ink, and we've used Tattered Angels. All right, so now I'm just going to stamp this and I'm gonna rotate it every so often so that it's not always in one direction. And I'll fill in with the butterfly. We'll just start here and I'll rotate the butterfly. That way, if we're looking at our paper because we cut it up, we've got it going all in different directions. So we don't have to worry about which direction we put the item. And let's see, let's put one going this way. I think a couple more. Well, I think I need another stamp. So let's see what else I've got here. So I'll put this back where it belongs. And let's put this over here. I have a new stamp. I haven't even added it. It's just a script background. And I think I just want to come in here and kiss it to the page randomly which will kind of help fill in around the butterfly and the music I don't even remember what I called it I don't know if I called it a script or but I knew I wanted something that would add a little texture to my pages and it's text but you can't read it so what do you think? We've got one done. And you could add more color to that. Or set that aside. And let's do another one. Move this out of the way. Move that out of the way. When my pages curl, you won't be able to see me, but... I go over the edge of my desk and kind of curl it back the other way. It's just that acrylic paint is drying, so it's pulling the fibers on our book page. This time I think I want to do some watercolor, and I just did a video and I'm getting ready to edit it about this new watercolor um, palette that I have that I got off of Amazon. It was Right now it's on sale. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep that stamp out a lot, I'm pretty sure. I just, I don't know if I, I think they're in the description box, this watercolor set, um, Robin, if you're looking for the link. 
but I got them off Amazon and I think right now they're under $15 for this set of 50 colors. Now these aren't premium watercolors, but they do the job. They work pretty good. So my thought was I want to make basically some blobs on the page. So I need, I got a paper towel to wipe off my brush. All right. So then I'm going to water my brush down and I want, let's do this kind of a purple here and I'm going to make kind of a, just a block of color and I'll do it again in a different spot. I like how this is so vibrant even on this watercolor paper or the acrylic paint. I know y'all can't see it, but it's a brighter pink. All right, so I'm going to grab a little bit more. Uh-oh, Robin ran away. Yeah, it's just a variety of colors that you can use. And, you know, it gives you a little bit more leeway because you don't have to mix all the colors. They're already pre-mixed. But you also have more colors that if you want to mix some, because of whatever, you know, special needs that you have, then you've got a nice selection here to allow you to do so. All right, so I'm just going to kind of fill in. All right, let's pick one more color. All right, what do we want? Maybe a, um, do we want a green or a yellow? Let's do a yellow. Because that'll kind of make a green where it blends. Get a little bit more. So just playing with watercolor paints. Clean my brush off. Set that aside. All right, I'm gonna move this out of the way for a moment and get my tray. And I'm gonna dry this with the heat tool. Now, if you have the space and the time, you can let it um, hang out somewhere to dry. Cooking dinner. All oh, the buzzer went off. Okay, you're going to have dinner early. <laughs> Stuffed shells and meatballs. Oh, that sounds good. And poor man's garlic bread. I know what that is. That's, that's either regular loaf bread or sometimes if we're lucky, we'll use hot dog buns because that's pretty good. <laughs> I'm trying to get the watercolor paint dried okay I think now I want to put some stenciling on here I find that the smaller stencils seem to work better Oh, but I like this one. This is from the Musical Botanica stencil. Uh, uh, I can't get my words out. <laughs> it comes in the Musical Botanica subscription box. I only have like seven or eight left. So if you don't already have a subscription and you want one of these, go to my website. It's on my landing page. Click on it. Choose the one you want. I'm getting ready to change that all out and limit which package you can get. I think I have one or two enough to get everything. If you want the Tattered Angels, the large printed kit, the, the, the planner printed kit, the mini printed kit, and the subscription box. <clears throat> Chili sounds good, Janice. You know what? I, since I was a kid, I haven't really just eaten chili unless it came with something else. Uh, my mom used to make it a lot because it was inexpensive. So um, 
I'm kind of, I don't, I'm not a big chili eater, but I do like the 15 bean soup. I think that to me is a little bit better, especially when we add all the stuff that we add to ours. All right. So I've got the stencil out and I think I want to add a little bit of color to it. So why not add the same colors that I use in a sense? I mean, there'll be a little variation. So I'm going to grab the colors again. This is amber and this is for ocean and I need my pink. Got it. All right. So I'm going to start with the fossilized amber again. And I think I'm just going to make that a deeper color in a couple of spots. So if I just kind of lift this up, you'll see it a little bit in those areas. So we're done with that one. Let's do the picked raspberry. I think my picked raspberry might be a little dry. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, we're getting a little bit of pattern. And then let's do salty ocean. All right, let's look at this. Add a little bit right here. Oh yeah, that looks good. So we still have the different shade underneath where the stencil was. I didn't make it a full stencil, uh, meaning I didn't do the whole thing. So it kind of has this um, pockets that don't have any color. You're going to make it after Christmas. You, oh yeah, get ham for Christmas and then you'll make the 15 bean soup. That's a good time to do it. The cheesier your chili, the better. <laughs> That's how you like it. Yeah, that, that would be good. Cheese on it on chili makes it really tasty. I'm gonna set that up there for now. All right, so I've got a little bit of a design going on. Let's grab another stamp. <laughs> oh, I think I'll just do this one. And maybe this one. So I've got the treble clef and bass clef, but I'm just going to use the treble clef and I've got the swirls and music stamp. So I'm going to get a block. Let's see if that one will fit. And this one. Oh, if you've ever had a problem with your stamps not sticking and they're the cling, I, I've mentioned this before, but take a piece of packing tape I'll show you with a piece of um, just regular tape. So I've got just some regular tape and you grab a hold of your stamp and then lay your tape over the back and kind of press it and then peel that away. Don't let it stay there. Take it off. And when you do, if you had glitter or dirt on the back of that stamp, it pulls it off and then it sticks better to the block. I was mess, messing with that the other day and I thought I've got to show this a couple of times for those of you that have stamps that don't stick. Another thing is if you have stamps that don't stick, you can use Zig two-way glue. I have it in a couple of sizes. I have this one, which is Zig two-way glue, and I have it in a bigger Oh two-way glue thing and this glue you can you have to load it by punching the uh, tip in and out and then it'll come out this is a neat glue because it's a temporary adhesive or it can be permanent but if you put it on the back of a stamp or a piece of paper that you want to make into a sticky note then let it air dry and then once it's dry you can stick it to other pages or your stamp block 
and be able to use them again. Thank you, Connie. <clears throat> All right, so now I've got the swirls. And again, I'm just going to stamp this randomly so that it's all over the place. And we're getting patterned paper from book pages. All right, so now I'm going to do the treble clef. I'm just rotating the page and then stamping it in different directions. Okay, I like that. So we've got the different patterns in the background, a little bit of texture going on, but yet keeping it smooth. Well, I'm glad you like the tips. I, I try to share a little bit whenever I think about it because I do know there are new people that haven't been in the craft paper art industry very long and so they don't know these things. All right, I'm kind of thinking that I need to use this little script stamp, Julie. <laughs> Just because it obscures the text from behind, it fills in some of those spaces that maybe need a little bit of help for whatever reason. Because we all need a little help, don't we? Let's see, go right here. All right, just so you can see this a little better, I'm trying to find a blank sheet of paper. Here we go. So we don't have to compete with the background. What do you think of that? Is that kind of fun? So you can get a good pattern. All right, so there's two that we got made. And I need another piece of paper. All right, so I'm just smoothing that out. All right, so this time I'm thinking I'm going to do something a little different where I stamp directly onto the paper first, and then we will add color. So I'm going to grab some of my stamps to decide what I want to use. I've got the Corner Roses stamp. You know, I think I'm going to use the flax, maybe. And I may get out a dragonfly. I think that'll be good. Okay, so that's that's what I want this time. So I need a small block for a dragonfly. Let's do the smaller. This is dragonfly number two. So I'll put that on there. And then I want the flax rubber stamp. Ooh, maybe I maybe I want this one too. I don't know. I've got the um, little daisy stamp. I'm going to leave that out because I may use it later. <laughs> It'll already be out. All right, so I'm going to use the flax. I'm grabbing a little scrap of paper. So when I stamp this, I don't really want the stem per se to show. So what I hope to do is position this around and then put a piece of paper to kind of help block out where the stem is. I don't know. I'm going to play with it. We're going to try see what happens. Hey, Sally. Welcome, welcome, welcome.
yeah, you don't have to have the fancy paper pads if you don't have them. And I think I'm going to kind of go at an angle here on off the page. There we go. And then maybe this way. And then filling it in. Maybe like that. Yeah. I didn't leave very many white spaces, did I? <laughs> we'll we'll figure it out. All right, let's put it this way. Maybe like that. All right, so I just kind of went all over. Can you see that? Let's put this guy back where he belongs. And then let's stamp the dragonfly in places. So maybe, for example, right here. And then again, over here. I like it. And I think we need something down here. Maybe one one off the page. Is that a good balance? I think it's a pretty good balance. Hey, Ruby Lily, welcome. So good to have you here. All right, let's put the... Actually, I'm going to save the dragonfly because I think I'm going to use it again. If I have time. How much time do we have? <laughs> I'm just having fun decorating the papers. All right. So we want to color this. And you can color it with different things. You could color, go in painstakingly coloring it with a color pencil. I think uh, watercolors work really great. The watercolor pencils and watercolors work good as well as the Distress Oxides to color in. So I think I'm gonna use the, I'm gonna use the paint palette again. I'm gonna get my, my money out of this. So I'm just spraying it with water to help get that juices flowing. And I'm gonna pick a paintbrush that I wanna use. This one's pretty good, I think. So I'm gonna load it up with some water, which I think I need to dump and get fresh. So I keep a, a water jug. We buy distilled water, but when we drink it or make our ice with it, we have the empty containers. And so I keep those. All right. <laughs> I got, what color should we make the flax in this one? Flax typically is blue and I don't really have a blue paper going, so I think maybe we'll use this. This one's called Peacock Blue, but I think it'll come out lighter once we start to paint with it. So I'm going to grab some. I think what I'm going to do is grab some and put it in a paint well so that I can kind of dilute it a little bit. I should have used a different paintbrush to load that, but we're getting there. All right, so I've got a little bit here, and I'm just going to kind of come in here. It's not very dark, and maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. We'll see how this comes out. And I'm just going to quickly, loosely color where the flowers are, or where at least I think they are. <laughs> and I'm, I know it's kind of looking blobby in a couple places. That's where the paint pooled on top of the acrylic paint. I'm gonna get a little paper towel to kind of help mop up any excess. And then we'll just keep going. You love that? Okay, thanks, Julie. Thank you. Thank you, Leah. 
I mean, it's again, it's a book page coated with acrylic paint using an old gift card or a credit card, whatever you have, a brayer, you can use that. And then letting that dry. And then I stamped over the top of it. I'm using archival ink jet black. So you want an ink that is okay with water because some of those inks you'll get them and they are a uh, water-based ink and so if you get them wet with water they will bleed so I found that I like the archival ink by Jet, Jet Black by Ranger because it meets what I want it to do kind of have to remember what the stamp looks like to determine what needs color on it. All right, so I'm going to look back over it, maybe right there, maybe right there, maybe right there. It's not perfect. It's just adding color throughout. What do you think? You like it? All right, so now I want, I need a green. So I think I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going, I'm going to cheat this time. I'm going to just spray it first. All right, so I'm just adding some water to my palette. I want a green. I don't want it to be too much of the wrong color, but I'm going to grab this olive green and maybe a little bit of the light yellow green. I'm just trying to mix my own color. So now I'm just going to come in here where the leaves are and add a little color. And again, it's not, it's not precise. It's just adding color where I, where I typically think there is a leaf. Okay. Are we playing a boss fight now? I think I like how this is going to turn out because how many times have you wanted to have your own custom paper? Maybe you bought something and you didn't get all the coordinating things. Well, make it your own. Pull the color that is in whatever you're working on and get some rubber stamps or stencils and just make pattern papers. I really like how this is looking. See, and since this is mine, meaning I created this work of art and I hand painted it, I could scan this into my computer and then I could offer this as a digital download. What do you think? And I know it's probably getting too busy with the background. I'm trying to find some paper. This one's cleaner, so I'm going to put this right here so it kind of gives us a little bit more. What do you think of that? I kind of like it. All right, so I think now what I want to do is color the dragonflies. I have also some metallic paint, so let's see what it looks like. This is my control card. I haven't set given the link for this yet. Yeah, you like it? Thank you, Robin. Thank you, thank you. Um, so I've got some metallic paints here. And this one is kind of a greenish. And there's a green gold there. I think maybe we'll use that one. And we'll make these dragonflies maybe a darker green. Or do I want to make them purple? You know, I'm allowed to change my mind. I think I'm going to make them purple. So I'm going to pick the dark purple 
and put it into my water that I have here. Yep, I like it. Okay. So I'm just going to come in here again and then just loosely color these dragonflies. Now I've watered that down so that it's not super duper bright because I didn't want them too bright considering we've got the flowers behind. And again, I'm just going to loosely watercolor. If you are one of those that really wants the images to pop, so for example, in a couple of areas, the dragonfly overlaps onto one of the flowers. And if you didn't want that to happen, what you can do is stamp the dragonflies first, then create a mask. What is a mask? A mask is a piece of paper cut to the same size as your image and then you temporarily lay it over to mask what you're working on. So in a sense, if you wanted, you could stamp the dragonflies all over, then make a uh, mask and lay a mask over each one of those and then come back in and stamp the flowers. And when you do, that will help the dragonflies pop because they won't be competing with the stamped image behind it. So again, I'm just loosely watercoloring that. I'm going to clean out my brush a little bit. And I think I want to use this metallic color that's in this palette. And I should have sprayed it a moment ago, but I forgot. So I'm just kind of forcing some water into it. And then I'm going to come back it's supposed to add a little bit of shimmer and it will be very difficult for y'all to see this but I can see it that it's coming out I'm liking it get some more water okay come in here and when I'm done with the dragonflies, it might be dry enough that I can come back in and then place some yellow in the centers of all my flowers. Okay, I think I got them all. All right, let's clean my brush. And I think this time I just want a yellow, so I'm going to pick... Um, Let's do this lemon yellow. And I'm just going to put a couple of dots kind of where the center is on these flowers. Again, not being precise, just adding a little bit. Is this something you think you could do? Go through your stamps if you have some. If you don't, you can go to my website and get you some. <laughs> and then see what stamps you could use to create unique, personalized papers. Don't worry, I, I know I'm showing you a lot of papers. We are going to use this here in a moment. All right, I'm going to clean that off. I like it. I like the way that turned out. Do you like it? Under the newspaper. Uh oh. Yeah, they're really cool. And I know you can't see it on the video, but the dragonflies have a little bit of shimmer on them. I'm going to dry it just a little bit so that when I set it aside, I don't risk getting the other papers wet. I think I want to do this one more time with the little daisy stamp that I have here. Maybe I should pick a different dragonfly. 
But I guess it'd be okay if it's the same. I like it. Do y'all like it? Maybe your Christmas present. I'll send you a link, Robin. I don't think I had the link in the description box today. I could probably get it really fast because I had it just a moment ago. All right, let's get another page. Move this up out of the way. Here. Nope, that's the other one. That's the one I want. Text. Come on. Hello, computer. There it goes. It was really slow. Copy. And this is for the metallic watercolor paints. All right. Yeah, I got so many more. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, things I use. Thing I use. Okay. I like this. So let's get the ink out again. And I'm going to use a little daisy stencil. And just stamp this all over. wasn't really pressing enough ink so there we go okay so we've got a nice variety all over i think we we'll do one right there so i'll put this back back where you belong i might get these leaves out Maybe this one. Let's get a block for it to stick to. We might use that one. And then I think I'm going to grab a different dragonfly so that we have variety. So do we want the bigger dragonfly? Maybe we can do this bottom one, number four. Or do we want the bigger one? So if we put him, I guess this is one of those I need to clean. It is. All right, so I'm just going to get a piece of tape. It wasn't sticking, so there's glitter on here. And I'm just going to rub that tape on the back and then peel it off. And so, I don't know if you can see that there's glitter right here. I'm going to put this on there. Didn't get all of it, but it got quite a bit. So now it should stick. Yeah, it sticks now. All right. I think we'll do the big dragonfly. Since he's bigger than the flowers by quite a bit. You know, and another thing you could use is these rectangular stamps. The postage stamps. You could even use these. I may have one more idea I want to share. Let's see if I can do it. Let's do it. All right, so I'm going to ink up. Yeah, it's always right there, and then you don't know where it went. It's like, what happened? All right, I think I'm going to stamp one right here. And then we'll stamp one over here. Let's go the other direction. off the page. I'm liking this. I think that looks pretty good. I got out this vine stamp. I don't know if I want to use it or not. I know I have another little stamp, but I don't know if I need it. Let's 
puts it on here. No. I hate it when you put things away thinking, I'll put it in this safe spot. And then I couldn't find it. That was me this afternoon looking for my watercolor paints that I just bought and had not even opened really to look at. And then all of a sudden I couldn't find them. And I was getting ready to be really upset. And I kept moving things and moving things. And finally I found it. <laughs> I think what I wanted to, oh, there it is. I've got this little curly cue and then I've got this little berry branch. So I'm thinking, let's do the berry branch. So you can utilize those little stamps. And my thought was, if I just kind of stamp it as if it's coming out from behind the flowers. Kind of add it here and there. Now I kind of wish I had one going in the other direction too. Maybe that will be next is to make a reverse one. Now I'm just kind of stamping it in the middle, not just coming off the flowers. It helps to rotate either your paper or your stamp. Trying to get it in different directions. I get a good, I think I got a good amount there. It's funny, I put this white piece of paper back here and I've already got it dirty. <laughs> that was tiny berry branch. Woohoo, you won, Julie, good job. Robin's cooking her dinner. All right, let's watercolor these again. All right, so we've got these colors. Got a little bit of yellow. What else do I need here? I have the pink roses. Maybe. Hmm. What color should I paint the little flowers? Get my paintbrush ready. You know, I already have some purple in my palette. Purple in the palette. Say that. Purple palette. Purple in the palette. So I'm going to use this and see how this looks. It's really pale, so I may. Let's pick up some blue. Yeah, I kind of like that, just doing it. And I'm working it in. I got hair across my face again. Ugh. That one was attached. <laughs> Here of late, my hair has gotten so long that it has a tendency just to annoy me. <laughs> Because it comes around and gets in my face. And I'm like, now I know why I always cut it off a little bit shorter. Because I get tired of fighting my hair. I was talking to my hairstylist. And I said, when you go to sleep at night, her hair is probably about six or eight inches longer than mine. So it's really long. And I said, do you wear your hair up? She goes, no, I don't. I just lay on it. Um. One of the other hairstylists in the shop, she puts hers in what they call a, a loose, messy bun on the top of her head using a scrunchie so that it's not tight. It's just up. And that seems to work for her. So I've been contemplating starting 
to wear my hair up when I go to bed somehow. I mean, they did in a little house in the prairie. She wore a little cap on her hair during the day to keep it clean. I don't know. That's just a, a random thought that came to my mind. Are y'all ready for Christmas? You know, it's it's like next weekend, right? <laughs> December is, is among us in just a couple of days. And the season will be here that everybody will be celebrating and visiting friends and family. Oh, poke, poke, nudge, nudge. All right, y'all get in on the raffle. Oops, upside down. Get in on the raffle. All right, so I like this. Last time we made our dragonflies, what is it, purple? All right, I think all of them got the. I think this time, oh, I went right to it, I shouldn't have. I want to make them a teal color teal blue, teal green. I don't know which way we're going to go. But I like that. Clean off my brush. Yeah, my hair does grow very fast. I mean, I I kept I she cuts my bangs to above my eyebrows. And that was just two weeks ago. And it's already starting. I can see it. And so I'll start curling it up a little bit to get it up off my forehead. And if I'm really annoyed, I'll get scissors at it. <laughs> Oh, you got, you're almost done with shopping, and then you got to wrap and ship it all. Oh, my goodness. I don't buy Christmas gifts anymore. I figure, you know, we have so much stuff as it is. Instead, I'd rather just spend some time with friends. All right, so I'm just kind of mixing a teal. So no one gets gifts from me anymore. I figure if they want to see me, that's their gift. <laughs> All right, so I'm adding a little blue to the dragonfly's wings and up his body. Y'all see that okay? I really like how this looks. I have one more idea I want to try. I know, Robin, we got we got a few minutes, and we'll start the we'll do the uh, two hundred junk bucks. I have one more technique I want to try. I don't know if I should do it or not. Okay. And I'm going to rinse my water brush out. Let's grab the metallics again. And I think this time I am going to grab some of the green. And go over the dragonflies. Just a little. There's, some of them are still a little wet, so it's blending just a smidge, but not a lot. Kind of liking how this is looking. Okay. You only buy for your kids? Okay, gotcha, gotcha. We have, we have so much stuff that I'm just kind of like, Ugh, I don't need anything else unless you want to buy me groceries or pay my electric bill. Or <laughs> or just come hang out with me because I really don't need any more stuff. Like I'm liking that green.
All right, let's pat that a little bit. Okay, I like it. And I think I will reuse this green that I had out earlier and just do it over the berry branch. Just kind of giving it a little green. And then we're going to need to do the flower centers. And I think I need to add some color in the background. But I want this to dry before I do that. All right, let's clean that. And let's do the yellow again. I don't want a whole super bright yellow. I just want to put a little bit in the centers. Goes a long ways. Okay, I see a spot that I missed. I gotta clean the brush out. Move this out of the way. Let's dry this. You just go buy it because you can. Exactly. That's how you do it. <laughs> I wanted these watercolor paints. So I put them in my save for later in my cart. And I had them in there for a long time. And I'd go look at it. And then it said if I added it to my subscribe and save, meaning that I'm subscribing to get this multiple times, that I could get it at a lower discount. So I went ahead and subscribed for to get one every six months, but I can cancel it. I don't. I'm not locked in. I don't have to buy it. So I've, now that I like it, I, I am going to go in and cancel it. And if I need a refill, I'll order one. You made your granddaughter's gifts and grandson's gifts money. Oh, cool! I know those girls will treasure those gifts. All right. I think we need a little color in the background. I'm kind of thinking maybe pink. So I've got pink here. Let me get the pink picked raspberry. I'm just going to add a little pink hue where there really isn't any color. It's not a lot. Now you could watercolor the background, but I have a tendency to get a little heavy handed and I didn't want that color bleeding into the images. Cause you kind of see even with that green there. I miss a spot a little bit there maybe. I like it. Can you, can you see? Well, I could splatter it. I, I have another layer I think I want to put on, but I don't really like splattering because it makes such a big mess. <laughs> All right, I'm going to grab my little scripty stamp again. And again, I'm just kind of stamping over, which helps obscure the text in the background. I like it. I like it. That looks pretty cool, doesn't it? All right, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pages that I've decorated. Now that I'm looking at this one, it's the only one that 
the background is really quite visible. So what color could I put on this one to kind of fill in? Maybe, I think we're going to do the seedless preserves. Move this out of the way because I think I'm done with the watercolors. There's more I could show, but I think I've showed enough and we need to make the actual folio. So I'm just going in and picking where I want to put a little bit of color. Now, I could have sprayed this with Tattered Angels before I started. Okay. I think that works. That kind of gives it a little bit more variations in the front and the background of it. Okay. move that out of the way <coughs> but <coughs> pardon me <coughs> I took a drink of water and I got choked and I think I have oh here's some I was experimenting this I thought would be neat to put one stamp in the middle and then tear those pieces out and this, I just did brush strokes with the watercolor paint all over. And these are sheet music that I painted with spray tattered angels over it. And I don't know if they need anything else. You know, when you pair it with these pieces, you kind of get a little variation. All right. Julie's getting hungry. So let's use some of these papers. So I'm going to get rid of this thing because I'm not doing the painty port. All right, set this out of the way. And I think what I need is, I need to take my gloves off. I was like, my hands are getting hot. Why are my hands hot? <laughs> You're making me hungry, Julie. I'm going to have to get some of my snack mix that I have over here to my side. I went to the Dollar Tree and, and I bought, it says uh, Imperial Nuts Protein Blend. And so I like keeping them handy because I just need a little snack. Mm. Oh, I know what their idea was going to try. I was thinking about taking one of these and just painting these flowers all over it. Do you want me to do that? Let me know. Oh, that's pretty tasty. Um, so, you don't have 12 by 12 paper. I'm going to show you a technique where you can glue papers together and make a 12 by 12 paper. So in my case, I have big pages. But if you have little pages, it'll work out. You can do it. It doesn't matter what they are. That could be junk mail. It could be book pages. Scrap papers that are ugly. Scrap book paper that you don't like. Basically, we're going to glue this together until it comes out 12 inches by 12 inches. My papers are 8 by 11, about. I'm going to take a little bit of tacky glue. And on this edge, I'm going to come down and glue these together. So I'll kind of kiss it into the glue and then move it over the way. And then I'm going to line it up top and bottom because I want this to be straight. And if it's not, I'm going to fix it. All right, then what I do to make it easier for me is I cut it. 
If you don't have a rotary cutter, then use a pencil and a ruler and mark it and cut it by hand. Some people use a um, exacto knife, craft knife, a rotary cutter, whatever you have to get it the size you want. But I just had that. What I do with it? Ah, there it is. So I cut that piece off, and I happen to have another piece because I've already done this once. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line these two pieces up here. Line this up here. And I'm going to cut this piece to be 12 inches long. It'll make sense in a moment. It's like a puzzle. We're just figuring out how much paper we need. And because it's 12 by 12, it's pretty big. So I don't want a lot of excess hanging out because then it's hard to get it into the paper cutter. Woohoo! You won! Good job! All right, so this is 12 inches this way. So now I need to make it 12 inches that way. So I'm going to glue this piece on and then we'll cut it off at 12 inches. All right, we're going to do the raffle here in just a moment. So y'all get in on the raffle. I'm going to put this down in the glue. And I wasn't perfectly straight on this other piece of paper, but it's going to work. So I'm going to put this back in here. I'm going to turn it over this way. Come out to 12 inches. And I'll cut off that excess. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of fix up where I messed up here. That page was a little bit crooked. <laughs> All right, the reason why I'm starting with the 12 by 12 is because at uh, Camilla Craft Designs, she was showing how to take a 12 by 12 piece of paper to make a folio out of it. So here's my 12 by 12 paper now. I want to cover it so that it becomes decorative. So we have something on both sides. And I have over here my papers. I've also got a few. Um, Oh, that was one I made earlier, so we're not going to use that one. It doesn't go with what I'm doing. But I've got some pieces of sh music and a page out of a music hymnal with the text. So I thought what we would do is let's start by just gluing down one of these sheet music pieces. We are going to see... 12 inches wide by 8 inches tall of our decoration that we're adding. So if we go back to this, if this whole page is collaged, then you kind of see how much of it you're going to get. And then on the other side, we're going to use some of those that contrast. All right, I think what I want to do is cut this. Let's make it uh, four inches. And then I'm going to cut this one to make it five and a half inches. And I'm going to cut one of these. Let's make this one three inches. And I've got some more here. I'm going to make this a two and a half inch long strip. Okay. Maybe let's do this pink. And we'll make that four inches. I find that I like to go ahead and cut some of the paper up 
so that I have a variety of shapes to put in there. You could just lap them, cut off the excess, but I really wanted to kind of make this a little random. Well, I definitely need some of this one. So let's go. Let's make sure we get some of that butterfly. Yeah, I think that'll work. Let's do a piece of this. And I'll cut. I may not need it right away, so I'm just cutting all of these. Because I need to cover both sides of my paper. And I think I want to add some... Oh, sorry. Nope, I'll do it. I'm sorry. I forgot. Let's do the junk bucks raffle. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> I'm in my own little zone. I'm just chatting away. All right, let's pick a winner of 200 junk bucks. And that winner is... Creative Nana, a.k.a. Sheila. Congratulations. All right, let's um, reset this and do... I'm going to do a $10 off coupon to my shop. I've already had a couple of y'all order your prizes, so to speak. I figured it's better if you go in and get $10 to pick whatever you want instead of me just sending you something random. Although sometimes the random things are fun, right? All right, so I'm going to add some distress inks to these edges really fast. I'll kind of lay them around. I should have cut this one straighter because I like to have it somewhat straight. All right. So maybe if we put something like that here. I don't know, I'm just, I'm just playing at the moment. I may want to put, like, where's that strip? <clears throat> this is where I have fun, too, is kind of laying them all out in different directions. So what if we were to put this in the corner and... Then we put this piece down, and maybe we even come down a little further so it overlaps a little bit. Maybe this one will go there. Maybe one more piece of music up there. We've got these three patterns on this side, so... I'm kind of thinking I may rearrange this because this isn't bigger, really, is it? There's a little bit of a gap in the middle. So if I put this up here, I'm going to turn it this way. So it's going in different directions. This one goes there. And maybe... Maybe what we do is add a little pop of color. And then maybe we just cut a smaller strip to fit in here. I'm trying to decide which one I want to use. Maybe this one. Okay. Or I cut off a piece of this and use it down there. I could do that too. All right. So I think what I do is I'm going to start in this corner and kind of place everything down. Yeah. If I get it finished, I'll raffle it off at the end. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go ahead and glue this one down. You want to make sure you get the glue pretty well spread out near the areas where we're going to cut it. 
because you don't want this becoming separated. So I'm going to get my bone folder and smoosh that glue to the edge. All right, and then I'll place this piece butt up against it and it covers this one a little bit. Do. Smooth it out. Oh, I didn't quite get enough glue on this edge. There we go. And then this piece is going to go in this corner here. I find that, you know, when I've just got a small area to fill in, it's just easier to put the glue down on the base paper. And I'm trying to decide which way I like better. I think I want that way. All right, we're going to smooth that out. Okay. Now I want this piece to go in here. This piece is going to go there. This piece is going to go over here once I figure out a piece to go in the center. So let's put this piece down. a little bit hanging off the excess in excess on the side. I lost it there for a moment. Oh, I know what I can do that I haven't done yet is I have some of these pages, but I don't know. Maybe this one. If I were to cut a little piece. No, I think it doesn't. It doesn't match in that instance for what I'm doing here. Now if I had cut all of those up and put them down that would be different. All right, I think if I do this then I'll have a little bit of overlap. Not much but there is a little bit there. Okay. So I'll go ahead and glue this down. Mm -hmm. All right. Get a little glue on there so it'll go right up to the edge. And then we'll smear that glue around. And I think what I'll do is I'm going to cut this piece off. Just make it even. And while I'm at it, I'll go ahead and cut this piece off. Let's cut this one off. piece going that way. I'm concentrating. It takes a lot of work. I don't know. It might be. I, that's why I was going ahead and trimming these because I thought if I put this down here and then put this piece in, that makes a nice... I'm okay if it covers it up. 
So I think that's what I'm going to do is put this piece right here. And I didn't get to distress the edge, but the sheet music beside it kind of has a distressed edge. And then we'll glue this piece even across there. Smooth it out. All right, so that's one side. So let's cut these off. Cut this piece off. And I think I want something different on the other side, don't we? Maybe? I don't know. Um, I was wondering if we wanted to put more um, just the sheet music. That's almost six inches. Not quite. I have this piece. And I have this piece. So I kind of can do like a, a four panel, maybe even add some regular sh in there. That way when we cut this up, part of it's going to come to the inside or vice versa. So that's where I'm at. I think it's just the same width. I could do a little strip. Let's, let's do a couple of strips of this. So <clears throat> first I'm going to cut off that excess area. And this is three, three and a half inches. So if I wanted to make this three and not a quarter, just three and a smidge, just a smidge. Just a smidge over one. So now I've got these pieces. So what if we glue this here and I glue this here and I glue that there. And then does that, oh, it doesn't cover. So I kind of need one more piece, don't I? So if I go this way, oh, I have this piece. So what if I put that there, then this one, then I can glue this on the page and that on the page. I'm trying to decide if I should go ahead and put, I put this little brown strip in between. I can stamp on that. What do you think? I'm going to add some distress inks to these pieces I cut and let's glue those down. Glad I kept all these little pieces laying around on my desk. And this piece, this piece. Alrighty. So I think what I want to do. Is I'll start in this corner 
and stack this up. We'll do the middle and then I'll do this side. Thank you. <laughs> you enjoy the process. You do you. <laughs> uh. I have the Beeline Designs music stamp that I've had forever. So I'm going to see if I can stamp this to where it looks like it was a piece that we just cut up. It's not straight, but that's okay. I think that works. And that'll go over there. Better! Yeah, you, overthinking can be difficult, you know. I'm just kind of figuring out a puzzle piece that I can put together. And wherever it comes together is where it comes together, you know. You don't have to fret about it too much. All right, so I'm going to put this right here in the corner and use my bone folder. I'm just really making sure that that glue is adhered the page together. Oh, that's just the perfect fit. I, I got lucky. So then I'm going to put this piece right here. This is music paper. It's really old and it's brittle, so I'm trying to be very careful with it. All right, so now we're going to go, let's kind of make a guideline. I'm going to put glue in here. The folio that um, Camilla made, she used cardstock, and this isn't going to be as thick as cardstock, but it should be enough to give it enough body to be the folio. If that makes sense. If your paper is too thin, just double up. Make two of the 12 by 12 pieces and stack them together then it'll be a lot thicker if you want that thickness all right got that glue all the way to the edge so now i'm going to do is glue these pieces down and i think i'm going to turn it this way so that i can cover up part of that all right, so I'm going to glue this piece down first. I decided to go off the edge because there's not any print. And then that way I've got something on all sides. And then we'll put this piece down. <clears throat> this will be in the middle, so I'm just going to put a nice generous amount of glue generous generate <laughs> don't know what that means okay and then we'll put this piece up here I'm just having fun playing with paper. I think I forgot to do the distressing on that one, but it will. So now I'm going to start with the purple here and work my way down the page. This is going to go in between. Yeah. All right. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it. 
You believe me? Oh, the stencil club usually mails out after the 15th of the month. However, right now, I don't have any active subscribers. And I haven't made any new stencil sets because of that. So, if you want to resume your subscription, Rhonda, send me a message with the last stencil club that you have. And then we can work out the details of what you would like to do. Okay, got that smoothed out. So now I'm going to put this music in the middle here. I may go all the way. Well, it won't go all the way, but... kind of just add some glue here I think I just got a bunch of notifications I got a new cell phone because it was time from our plan to upgrade and we got one for free okay I think all right nothing 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 I need to worry about normally my phone doesn't go off and so I was concerned we got one going that way. I think we need to go this way. Put this right here. All right, so I'm going to put some glue going down here. Cross. Back up. Land in the glue. Line it up, line it up. Okay. Now let's see if I can get this in the paper cutter to trim off the excess pieces. those pieces off. Now we need to do this direction. And I'll cut off this side. Something fell over. All right, so here's what we're going to do next. We're going to cut this to be our folio base. So I know this whole first half of the video was all about making this page. <laughs> but wouldn't making a bunch of these pages be a lot of fun? I think it would be because you can just sit here and make them two-sided, whatever you want. Like I said, it's not quite as thick as cardstock, but it's got a good feel to it, good texture to it. So now what I need to do is cut this to be 8 inches tall by 12 inches long. So I'm trying to decide, you know, which way. I think if I cut this, it takes off some of the... So you end up with these patterns. That's what you could use on the other side. If I do it this way at four inches, we're getting a little bit of all these patterns. I think that's what I'm going to do is put this where it's on the four inch mark and cut that off. And I've got a little excess of paper here, so I just want to trim it. All right. So now we've got this. 8 inch tall by, I just made a mess so I'm trying to clean it up, 8 inch tall by 12 inches. I'm going to move some stuff out of the way. Got too many things on my desk and it's bogging me. Alright, so we want to make this into a folio. Do I want to make that the inside or that the inside? I'm thinking 
I'm going to make this the outside and this is going to be the inside because I have an idea of something I want to place on this front panel. So what she said to do was to score this at four inches and then again, moving it towards the four, score it again. So basically like an eighth of an inch. So I'm just going to use my little stylus tool. And then I'm going to move it over about an eighth and do it again. Okay. Then I'm going to flip this around and do that one more time. Now, if you have a scoreboard, you would go four and then you would come in to about three and an uh, almost an eighth less than four and then you would do it at eight inches and then an eighth inch less than eight all right so now what i want to do is using that as my fold guide just kind of fold that my It'll give later, but right now it's fighting me. There it goes. Just a little bit of a, a fold there with a flat spot. All right, so now I got to figure out where it is on the other side. Oh, yeah. Now, if it's not perfectly lined up at the bottom and you want it to be, you could definitely take this to a paper trimmer, okay? So we've got this piece that folds out. I'm just kind of smoothing it out. So now we want to add this back in as pockets. So the first cut is I'm going to make at four inches. And then I will rotate this and cut it back to three and three quarters of an inch. And again at, no, now I want to cut this in half. Yeah, so I'm going to cut this in half at two inches. So I have two by three and a quarter. And I got these two pieces and those are going to become pockets. And we can alternate them, change them around. So this piece, which is now eight inches tall by four inches wide, we're going to cut in half. And then you decide which one do you want to be a pocket that's going to be up and down on the page, which I think I can cheat because the music is going the wrong direction. And then I'll cut this one up to make pockets. So I'm gonna take this piece and cut it at three and a quarter. And I'll cut this piece at three and a quarter. Are you following me? What now? Oh, uh, Camilla Craft Designs. Camilla Craft Designs. I meant to grab her um, link and I totally flaked out and forgot to do that. So sorry, y'all. I want some one inch strips so that my pockets are the full width. So I'm going to cut some of these really fast to make little gussets to go on my pockets. And I need to find my circle hole punch that I saw earlier. There it is. Okay. I don't know how many I need. I'm just making them while I have the cutter available to me. Okay. Set that aside. Get some distress inks. All right. So I'm going to do this one and this edge.
I didn't do any sewing this time around because I know there's several of you who don't sew or don't have a sewing machine. But this is the stage where if you wanted all of these pieces to have stitches around them, then take your time and go stitch on those. You could have also stitched on the actual folding. I don't know why I'm patting the lid thinking I'm getting more color. Um, <laughs> I was like, why is it going up? Um, so it just kind of depends on the look that you want. You could do one side that was stitched upon. If you had two 12 by 12 papers that you put together before you glue them back to back, you could have sewn on one side and then glued them together. Does that make sense? Oh, good. You found it. Camilla Craft Designs. Thank you, Robin. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I know this is my pocket piece and I think I want it that way so I'm just going to make a mark so I know where the center is and then line this up and make a little thumb hole and hope the paper is dry enough okay so we got a little thumb hole So now what I'm going to do is take a strip of paper I did all that work to put that strip there and you're not even gonna see it <laughs> but I know it's there right I know it's there I want to be able to utilize the full depth and height of my pocket so that's why I'm adding this little piece of paper to the edge so that I can basically make it a it's not a gusset because we're really not adding additional space but it will have a little bit more room if you didn't have this strip in there Okay, trim this one off. I'll go ahead and trim the corners. Trim this piece. All right, so this is going to be a pocket that will be placed right here on this side. I'm going to love this for sure. Okay, I think because this one's so plain, I'm going to make this a belly band in the middle. And okay, I think I'll make this a little pocket that's going to go right here, and then this one will go here in the middle. So we get lots of variety all over. All right, so this piece, I just need to round the corners if I'm following her idea. So I'm gonna round these corners and this is gonna be a belly band. I'm gonna ink those corners real fast. And then this piece is gonna go in the middle. I'm trying to pick a good height I think I'm going to use the edge of this page to kind of give me the right location. So about a three inch strip can go behind there. So I'm going to put that right about there. Make sure that I'm in the middle of my page here. I'll go ahead and fold these in. I always like to give it a moment for the paper to dry before I fold them in because I don't know how many times that I've folded it immediately after I glued and the glue stuck. <laughs> so I do recommend that you allow the glue to dry. Okay, I'm liking the way that looks. All right, let's glue this down.
I made a whole video out of doing somebody else's project. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, so now we got this strip. We've got this strip. This is going to be a pocket at the bottom. So I'll go ahead and add my strips. So I'll have the full use of this pocket. Well, hey, Margie. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope you are well. You have been missed, my lady. So thankful that you are here today. I hope you are doing all right. All right, I'll cut this piece off. And then I need a piece over here. Okay, trim it. Oh, thank you, Margie. You're so kind. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I greatly appreciate you supporting me. All right, so this one's going to go here. And then I'm going to do uh, the sides of this one and the bottom of this one because basically this is a double pocket, but we're not going to slim it where the bottom of the pocket is. We're going to let it go all the way down to the bottom. So I'm looking at this. Is that the way I want to do it? I think that's the way I want to do it. So I'm going to put on this side and that side. So if I take a strip, put it here. So basically it's kind of like a belly band. Really, you're gluing the two sides. You're leaving the bottom open. Okay. So that's one piece that's going to go over here. And now I'm going to do this piece. And I decided that way. So that's going to be my bottom. Put my strip down. Trim it off. The paper is starting to get firmer as the glue dries. There's something about using the, the craft glue that it helps give it a little bit more body as it dries. One last side. I think I made the right choice of doing the simple music page that's been painted with tattered angels on the inside and then bringing the strip to the pockets that we cut up. I say we, I cut it up. You're just here for the ride. Okay, so let's fold this one up. Fold this one up. Now she rounded the corners of her pockets and I don't, I don't think it's necessary on this one in particular. So I'm just going to go ahead and line it up with the one above and in the middle. So kind of using that as a gauge. All right. Well, hey, Jennifer, how are you, lady? So now I'm going to use these to make a double pocket. So first I'll fold this over and fold this one over. That's going to go at the top. So now I'm going to fold this in and fold it in over here and here. So now what I want to do is this piece is going to overlap and then this will go right here. So I need to put a little bit of glue here and here. 
And then I'll make sure that the little flaps are catching. So we'll kind of place that in the glue and slide it up just a smidge. I'm just holding that with my fingers for a moment. All right, now, oh, I forgot to put the thumb no hole in it. Oh, well, I don't always do those, so I forget about them. They're not always necessary, I don't think. I mean, there's some cases that you really want them, but I think today we can be okay without them. So I'm going to put it closer to the edge. So I'm just going to line this up with the edge and place that down. Thank you for being here, Jennifer. Thank you for your hanging out with us. All right. So we got all those glued into place. Let me add some distress inks to the edges. And we'll go ahead and do the front. Kind of makes it all come together. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I greatly appreciate your support. All righty. It'll take a little bit. We'll tie this shut, and that will help it uh, fold in on itself. And I think what I want to do is I want to use, I don't know which one. Let's see what happens. I can use these if I cut them off a little bit and maybe just do a panel on the front. So here's what I'm going to try to do. We know that this is less than th four inches. So if I cut this at three and a quarter, let's come in just, or three and three quarters. Let's split the difference. Okay. And I know it's eight inches tall, so I'm going to see if I can't trim this. Yep. And then turn this around and cut off anything. There we go. Beyond eight. Oh, wait, but it's eight inches tall. I was going to leave a border. I hate covering up that whole front panel. Uh, another thing that I could do is just fussy cut out one of the butterflies. I think that's what I'll do. I'll just kind of fussy cut that out. It's okay to change your mind. I'm showing you that right now. All right, so I'm going to kind of leave a little bit of the music that Norella put with this. Maybe what I'll do is I'll cut out this other one and find a spot for it too. So what if we did that instead? I like it. Let's add some distressing. This came from the Musical Botanica kit. I don't know which one. Mines are certainly changeable. That's exactly right, Margie. So if we put this right here, I'm just kind of put my glue on it which apparently I need to add more to. I saw... Oh, they're not even open. wonder what I did with the open ones. Well... I'm getting something that y'all like that you think you have to have all the time. <laughs> I'm getting out some doilies. I got some doilies. I could, if I color it, and then glue it down where it wraps around, 
I don't want it to cover up the music there though. Do something like that and put some color on that one. And maybe we'll put this one on the back side. Okay. I'm not going to get done, am I? I've piddled around so long trying to show you all different things, but I think you're going to get enough of the gist that even if I don't put all the stuff in it, you'll get the idea. So what if I put this one right here? I think I like that idea. All right, I think we need this to be sprayed a teal color. So I'm gonna lay this in here and I've got this kind of a teal blue. Let me see if it's enough of the blue. Oh, I think it might work. All right, so I've really added a lot of color to that. You're more about bling and second doilies? Okay, gotcha. Mm. Margie says, we got to get that cheesecloth. I used a lot of tattered angels on here. All right, I'm going to let that dry for a moment. And I think what I want to do... I have my little paper here, and I want another one of these doilies, and I'm going to use the seedless preserves and basically wipe a doily with it. Get my glove. I can put on my hand. All right, my thought was that if I then spray this with a little bit of Tattered Angels, I'm gonna grab a paintbrush and then kind of paint the doily a little bit. It really just changes the whole color of that doily. Bring out my brush. Lay it up here out of the way. All right, let's dry this. Oh, wrong way. The cats are hungry. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you all died. <laughs> uh, you're unalive. Okay, I like how that just really changed this color. I just knocked some stuff off. Oh. Okay. So if I were to take this piece and lay it here, and then lay that on top of it, wouldn't that be pretty? And then this piece, we'll lay it closer to the top maybe? Do we want this to come down? Let's put it in the lower quad quadrant. I think like that. I think that's what I'm going to do. Got to go turn off the oven, Robin. Be safe. Don't stick your head in it. All right, so I'm going to kind of leave that where I want it. And I've got one of these little bitty tipped bottles that Jennifer Edmondson gave me. Thank you, Jennifer, for making this, or giving it to me. Making the money, I guess is what I should say, to be able to purchase this. So thank you, thank you, thank you. 
I'm just putting a little bit of glue all over in the solid areas so it would adhere to our music. And I'm thinking kind of down at the bottom here. And right about there, I think. So I'm just going to smooth that out. I'm going to use my acrylic block to kind of mush it. I don't want to uh, rub real hard because the doilies can be rather tender. And then we'll put this piece up here like that. So it's good to have a little bit of a planned blank area so that you can collage over the top of it if you so choose. Oops, I almost ripped its little tail off. All right, and then this piece, I think I want to put it to where there's the fold. Kind of make that a line. And if I put this here and then put this guy right at the fold, I think that works. Yeah, all right, let's glue that in place. Ah, you're very welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're very welcome. All right, so we're going to come around here. Do, 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 do. And the glue. I was going to wear my earbuds to listen to some music, but apparently I forgot to put them on the charger <laughs> the last time I used them. And the earbuds itself has a, is charging when you put them in the little case, but apparently my battery was dead and I did not put it on the charger. So no music for me today. I like that. Bend that for a second. And then we'll put this guy right here. I like it. So I did use a printable with these dragon or butterflies from the musical Botanica kit. All right, let's close up the glue. Flip this over. I like it. So here's something that I made ahead of time. And I'll just explain it because I think you guys and gals are smart enough to figure it out. I took a book page and cut it to be narrow enough that it should fit in my pocket. So it's three and a quarter inches. Then I wrapped that book page that was folded in half around I wrapped a, a cleanup page from when I was cleaning up my edges on my gel press I would lay this on here and you would get these lines all the way around and I just thought it was so colorful and fun and I wanted a way to have some ephemera pieces in this little folio that you could pull out and access later so I was trying to come up with ideas and I have already used this idea before, but I have a different way that I did it this time. I'm trying to get my little thing out. I have been putting them in little envelopes, but I knew that I didn't want to try to dig out envelopes. So then I did this. I took a strip of paper and a piece of acetate and folded it over the edge then I lined up what I wanted to put inside and I made pencil marks. I folded the acetate over and then I stitched over my pencil marks. And now I've got this little element that holds all of these in one place. So they're easier to find when you want a word. So 
I thought, well, why not make something bigger? And I just realized I didn't get the distressed inks on this edge, so I might as well do it now. That could hold some other ephemera pieces. So I've got some stamped words that I thought could fit in here. And then these are elements from this creative subscription box, I believe. And we've got some little elements, fussy cuts. I'm kind of just sandwiching them between this little guitar uh, and the other image that could go in here. And then on the top, I had some of the tickets. And then these are page tabs. You can make them into tags, tags, or you could just um, attach them to a journal page if you want. So then that goes in here. I'm trying to get it so you can kind of see that there are multiple things. I also need to make sure that this stays even or it won't fit in my pocket. Okay, so I'm still working. Didn't glue that shut, did I? It had resistance. Resistance is futile. All right, then we're going to flip this over and let's put a couple more. So this is a element out of the kit. And then here's another rubber stamped word that I was going to put on the back side. Again, I'm trying to just fluff these up a little bit. And then music heals the soul. And there's a harp. So we'll put those in here. Oh, I have to change this because it's this one isn't as wide. I should have used a wider stitch. I use a real narrow stitch, and I'm just noticing that the acetate tore. But it's you know it's just it's a journal. We're just making something. So look at all of those goodies that are now available. If I did this right, it should just go right down in there. But for some reason, it's fighting me. There we go. So that fits right down in there. And then I have some tags. Let's put some shorter tags in here. And I had, but I don't see it now. Well, we'll just go... I was going to, I was also going to, uh, uh, make some cards to go in this, but I didn't get that far. I do have a little blank note pad that can go there. I've got this stay in tune with the rhythm of life can go in this belly band. And then here's a couple more tags and a journal card that can go in here. And I guess all I have left is just that spot. So I'm thinking we need to make something really fast to put in it. I have a book page here. I'm going to tear out two. I'm going to tear out three. I want it to be thicker. Oh, this will work. I have some of this graph paper. All right, so I'm going to make a card to go in here. I'm going to glue these together real fast and make them thicker. All right. Do you like what I'm doing today? Has this given you some ideas of how to use those book pages to make other things than just a plain pocket. All right, gluing it down. All right, so basically I'm, I'm trying to make a journal card so you don't have cardstock. I've glued three book pages together. 
So now they're a lot thicker. I will go ahead and cut this down. It can't be more than three and a quarter inches. I'm kind of thinking that maybe I make this an additional pocket. I don't know. Let's see. So if I take this to three and a quarter and I score it, let's put my bar down. And then folded this over. And if we make this into a pocket, we could put more journal cards in it. Or is this just too many? It could also just be a fold out journal card. So maybe what we'll do now is we need some writing space on this side and I need some writing space in the back. I also want to decorate it. So using some of the papers we already have, do I want to cut a strip? <laughs> I don't know. Just cutting a little piece of that to go on there. And then maybe a strip to go across the top and the bottom of something different. Ah, here we go. I've got this long piece. All right. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut a strip. So, this measures approximately not quite an inch and a half. So if I were to go to two and a quarter inch strip, I could glue it on this side and fold it to the other side. That's giving me a little bit of decoration on the back side. So if we put it here and it folds over to the back, then we've got a little bit on the front where the flippy is. I'm just going to trim this to be the same height. Okay. Get my distress ink. All right. Well, we're going to get off here in just a moment. I'm almost finished. There's more embellishment that I want to do. But I wanted to get this part of it at least started. So if I glue this here, and then I've got a piece of ledger paper from Calico Collage that I can put beside it to write on. That's what I'm thinking. So I'm going to glue this down. which will make it thicker. Okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the boss fights are brutal today. I think what I want to do is take this piece and cut it the same height as my little pocket card that I'm making. I'm just going to line that up. Glue it in place. Alright, so starting on this side, I'm going to put some glue. Oh, I just realized I was going to put some distress inks on the edges of that, so We'll do that. Put it away. All right, so now I'm just going to kiss that into the glue a little bit, and lift it up, and butt it up against this piece and smooth that out. And then we're going to bring this over 
the other side, I can get it to fold the way I want. Sometimes, I, sometimes it's easier if I put a ruler where I want my paper to fold, or you can score it. And I think I'll go ahead and cut this piece off. And let's glue this piece down. Everybody died again. Junkie Joe is just being really stingy. <laughs> It's funny how that happens because then some live streams, y'all will come back and say, I won 120 junk bucks playing with that bot. <laughs> so now we've got all these layers of paper on here. All right, so now I'm going to need to score it again because I've messed around with it so much and added all these layers of paper. I want to score it so it's easier to fold over. And then we'll add some distressing. So I think I need some more. If you don't have a bone folder, you could use a ballpoint pen that has gone dry. You could also use a um, butter knife. I guess I didn't get enough of it. Of course, just about anything that you can use to burnish with. Some people use their acrylic stamp blocks. Oh, I just lost a thumbnail. I pressed too hard. All right. So I got this piece, add some distressing to it. I think we need a paper clip to hold it all close. put a little paper clip on this that'll help hold it close and I know I have this little jar I can put in there for now so I think you got the gist of it I hope and then this would fold over and that would fold over that's our uh, inside page and then let's put some uh, oh I've got some yarn here. So if I were to take this, leave a little tail, maybe one, two, let's do three times. And then my good scissors. I cut it a little long, but that's okay. And so if we were to tie that into a little bow, now we have a little folio. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If it was a real nail, it would be very painful. And I'm glad that, you know, it just pops off. It's no big deal. Uh, it doesn't hurt. Didn't have any damage to my nail. What do you think? Do you like the way that turned out? I want to put some more stuff on it so it's not finished, but I think y'all get the gist of it. I think I want to put some words on the front. And then I want to decorate this front of the pocket, maybe even add something over here. I may even add another pocket here. And then we've got this piece. So I want to make another journal card to slide in there and decorate these elements. And then of course we have the pocket in the center with the belly band. Looks like this paper didn't get it here down. So I'm gonna put a little glue under there. 
using some of the printed kits, but you could also use some, you know, cards that you color yourself if you wanted. Oh, I could, I could also make a tag out of this piece to put in here. I may do that. And then this piece, I, I just thought this was clever being able to put all of the little ephemera pieces right here so you can get them out. You like that? All right, let's pick a winner of the $10 off coupon to my shop and we'll get off here. All right. The winner for the $10 off coupon code is Sheila. Congratulations, Sheila. I'll get that email to you probably in the next couple of days. Thank you all for being here. I give up on the hungry boss. <laughs> uh, I don't know why he's so hungry. He doesn't want to play. You like it? Congratulations, Sheila. All right. Well, I hope you liked the beginnings. It needs a little bit more work. But, you know, using her technique of a 12 by 12 and making the pockets. I forgot the thumb holes, but I think that's fine without them. But I think that makes it nice and bright and colorful. I hope you like it. I hope you're inspired to get out your supplies and play a little bit. I don't know what I'm going to do next week. You want to see more of this type of style? Uh, let me know in the comment box down below. Hey, I want more of like the folio or do you want me to make a journal page uh, tutorial where we do the whole front and back and make pockets and journal cards and everything? Or if there's something else you would like to see, definitely give me some feedback. Give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already. And of course, share it if you enjoyed yourself here today. Maybe somebody will come back and watch this in the replay and enjoy it as well. And thank you for watching. I greatly appreciate you supporting me, being here, hanging out with me for a little while. And I hope that uh, you have an amazing blessed week and that you are inspired to create and share a little kindness in this world. Oh, thank you, thank you, uh, Robin. Thank you so very much. Yay, thank you so much. Yay, uh, Margie, I hope you enjoy it, watching from the beginning, see how I did everything. Y'all have an amazing week and lots of love to each and every one of y'all. Y'all take care. Bye-bye, everybody.